Hello and welcome to the Acute Assessment Unit at Sir Charles Gardner Hospital. I'm James Williamson. I hope you enjoy your term here. I'll be your supervisor unless you're attached to one of the other medical teams, in which case that consultant will look after you. The educational objectives, indeed most of what I have to say, are set out in the orientation manual. You'll be provided with a copy of that before you come. Please take the time to read it. Please notify us of any leave that you might have requested ahead of time. Don't assume that we would have been informed by medical HR. We'll do our best to accommodate it within your roster. Please don't swap shifts. The roster has been organised to maximise the continuity of care for individual patients through the unit and swapping shifts can interfere with that. The unit was established in 2001 to cater for the needs of complex medical patients. These are predominantly elderly patients, often with multiple comorbidities, who are taking many different drugs. They often benefit from the early intervention of a multidisciplinary team, and you'll have the opportunity to participate in that teamwork. If you are the admitting registrar, please familiarise yourself with the exclusion criteria. And please ensure that all patients are admitted to the AAU within four hours of triage. The four-hour rule is important and we try to comply as best we can. Patients are generally admitted through the emergency department. Not all patients get up to G72, which is the physical location of the acute assessment unit. Some are seen and discharged directly from the emergency department. For this reason, it's important when using the hospital IT systems to search for your patients under the service designation MU7 rather than the ward designation G72. Let me take you through a typical day. It begins in G72 in front of the whiteboard when the events of the previous evening are reviewed. So, do we have anybody down in the emergency department? No, I don't think so. And were there any outlined last night that you know are still under our care? Yeah, but they didn't. And were there any medical calls? No Excellent. Okay, good. And no other problems? Nobody's sick and gone into a new site? Uh, no, New patients are marked in green, early discharge patients are marked 2 by 10 and on the right the expected date of discharge and the discharge letter status are marked. Yeah. That which does remind yeah. me, if there's anybody there that's over night or night, oh, okay. or, we can give the track to review. So I see that oh, seven and eight. few that have been identified. The AAU is divided into two zones, the blue zone and the green zone. Each is managed by a registrar and an RMO or intern, which form a team for the term. It's important that a member of each team attends the handover with the night team. Please pay attention to meticulous hand hygiene and obey the bare below the elbows policy. Ensure that you have access and have been trained in the relevant IT applications, including the PAC system, ICM, CGMS and e-referrals. The ward is led by the clinical nurse specialist. While the medical ward round is in progress, the multidisciplinary team springs into action. This includes the pharmacist, discharge coordinator, physio, occupational therapist, social worker, speech pathologist, and others. We get good support from the psychogeriatrics team. 
just unstable. The best way to put it is a rapid cycling kind of. Um, you know, the people who fell on with him and they. At the conclusion of the ward round, we meet for the multidisciplinary team meeting, where each patient is discussed in turn. Gastroenteritis. Unfortunately, her bowels open six times this day, but semi-form is not loose, mm -hmm. and twice in the night. The first two stools has been negative, but... Patients may remain in the AAU for up to two, exceptionally three days, under the care of the AAU consultant. A patient requiring a longer admission or specialist care would be transferred to an inpatient team at the earliest opportunity. In the case of general medicine, that would be the team on call on the day that the patient is deemed fit to transfer, unless the patient has been admitted under another team within the past six months, when that team would be preferred to enhance continuity of care. In order to ensure equitable distribution of the workload, no more than five patients should be handed over to the team of the day. Any more should be distributed among the other teams according to the number of inpatients under their care, bearing in mind, particularly at the weekends, that they might not be reviewed next day. Patients may be transferred to one of the medical teams, including SAMU, the subacute medical unit, or may be referred to the aged care team for admission to the GEM unit or perhaps Osborne Park for more protracted rehabilitation. Discharges may be supported in a number of ways, including hospital in the home, community care packages, etc., which the Allied Health Team and Discharge Coordinator can arrange. It's essential that everybody who is discharged receives a discharge letter. Make sure that the GP has been adequately identified and that any other consultants involved in the patient's care also receive a copy of the letter. Any thoughts? Um, she, she is mobilising with a lot of encouragement. She seems to be very pain focused. Um, she would have walked about maybe five metres, but she's not weight bearing very well on that left side. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I wasn't sure whether the bone scan was going to change anything or not, but she might need a few a few days of rehab before she goes home. Find out, is it psychosis or is it education? The AAU has an active teaching program and a number of compulsory educational meetings. These include the morbidity and mortality meeting, the GGM clinical meeting on Wednesday at lunchtime, and the DGM teaching sessions on Wednesday afternoon. These are specified in the roster, which we try to get out two weeks in advance. Occasionally it's slightly delayed, usually because the information from medical HR has not been forthcoming. There is also a radiology teaching session on a Tuesday afternoon, which is available for medical teams as well as the AAU. Interns can attend the intern training on a Wednesday morning, which is run by postgraduate medical education. A number of audits are in progress, to which you may be asked to contribute. These include investigations of hand hygiene compliance, VTE prophylaxis, heart failure guidelines, and clinical documentation. It's important that you complete the best practice guidelines in CGMS and ensure all patients are admitted to AAU within four hours. We'll just quickly go see yeah, the two I, by I, tens I, for tomorrow I, from Mr. Italiano. So you will need a discharge letter yeah. done tonight. Mr. Lawton, he's got a discharge letter prepared, so that's all right. This uh, gentleman here needs one. No, it's already been prepared, which is great. I'm not sure that there are any others that can get home tomorrow, but three is a good start. That patient's going home this evening. So we've got a couple more to be clocked this evening. I'll review them in the morning, and uh, I'm off.